Hey there, welcome to this lesson on flow states. We're going to talk about the science of flow states and four ways to access your brain's bliss pharmacy. So we often look to the outside world for most of our pleasure, like dark chocolate or laughter. But why do these things feel so good? On one level, there's the kind of scientific materialist framework that says that these good feelings, this pleasure is actually coming from neurotransmitters in our brain. Uh, you might have heard of some of these like dopamine and glutamate, and there's over a hundred different neurotransmitters. So I'm not saying that qualia, that conscious experience is necessarily uh, in the brain. Um, in fact, yeah, that's not been proven. There's correlation between neural activity and mental activity, but it's just the fact that our perceptions are more are a more direct cause for pleasure rather than the things like chocolate and the outside world themselves. So now what if there's a way to tap into these same kind of blissful chemicals uh, without endlessly spinning on a hedonic hamster wheel? In other words, what if we could get this kind of internal bliss without always seeking and seeking? Uh, one way is flow states. And based on my research, there's four types of flow states. Most people know about the first two types, but the second two uh, relate to meditation and they're more rarely practiced and known about. Okay, so flow state number one is automatic flow. This is when people typically think of a flow state. I mean, you can picture a drummer who's jamming out or a skier who's going full tilt downhill or a gamer who's just really absorbed in their winning streak. And athletes call it being in the zone. Now, automatic flow is um, probably stimulating these ancient survival pathways that are kind of giving it constant wind signals. And this includes the dopaminergic reward system as well as the locus ceruleus norepinephrine system. So it feels really good and you get this rush of rewarding chemicals but it often can't last forever. It doesn't last too long. Um, and rock climbers actually have a name for this. They call it the post-send or post-climb depression. Because basically once you get to the top, there's nowhere to go but down. And then there's the second type of flow state, uh, which we can call problem-solving flow. I gave it this name because I noticed that in the research, there's this uh, conflicting evidence in neuroimaging studies on flow states and so when the famous psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi coined the term flow state in the 1970s he didn't distinguish between these two types of flow problem solving which is more like what a chess player or a programmer like someone who's coding might experience and this more athletic flow that I'm calling automatic flow and so what happens is that in the in the neuroimaging studies, when they study people who are doing an automatic flow task, like a tightrope walker, they find what's called hypofrontality, which is that the frontal part of the brain associated with the executive control network um, is, is offline, basically. It's, or it's much less active, which makes sense because for the tightrope walker, if they're thinking if they're, if they're second guessing what they're doing and not relying on their automatic trained habits, they might fall off. They don't want to be overthinking it. They want to be completely in, in the zone. Both are relatively short lived and in, in the case of problem solving flow, uh, it's basically you need constant problems to solve in order to stay in this flow state. So it can be slightly stressful and it requires more mental effort. So now we come to the third type of flow, which I call meditative absorption flow. And in ancient Eastern traditions, this is sometimes called samadhi, such as in yoga, which may have existed for at least 10,000 years. So these are ancient technologies. We can think of them as a kind of mixed mental arts. And they don't require a parachute or sports gear really anything outside of your mind, which is pretty remarkable. So to picture this type of meditative absorption flow, imagine becoming completely focused on boring object, like it could be your breath, it could be the tip of your finger, 
or a candle flame. In fact, you might even try this. We're gonna do another exercise with this in, the, in a minute. But if you just put out your finger in front of you and focus on, the, your, on your fingertip and try to block out everything else, you can see how this might be pretty challenging. Most people have trouble doing that for longer than a few seconds before their mind wants to start thinking about the future or the past or getting distracted in some way. And so when meditators train their minds to be able to focus on something for long periods, they get very, uh, they experience a lot of bliss. It can also come about through intensive breathing practices, which can produce a similar type of flow. Like uh, Michael over at Yoga Lab has called this getting high on your own supply. And uh, it basically results in this ecstatic feeling that's been compared to sexual orgasm and even been described as quote-unquote unbearable bliss. So there's variations to this and there's many practices. We won't go into the details here, but the one type of kind of breath focus meditation that I mentioned is, has been shown in research to increase sustained attention by, by over 20% after a three month long retreat. So it can actually carry over past the flow state itself into people's daily lives. However, three months is a long period of time to be alone with your mind and this kind of intensive training, uh, a lot of people wouldn't have the time or availability or probably the desire to do that to get this kind of laser beam focus. It's a different kind of flow state than the first two also in that your meta awareness is online, at least until you might get to a stage of practice where even the meta awareness could go offline. But for the most part, that's required in addition to the concentration. So that makes it more unique. And it's also much more relaxing, relaxing than the other types of flow. So it's this more parasympathetic state that's been shown in preliminary data, which found a 75 to 100% increase in heart rate variability um, during jhana, which is a kind of concentration state in the Buddhist tradition. So the objective of this meditative absorption flow is also different. It's not just about enjoyment or winning or competing or anything like that. It's actually about the insights into the nature of the mind and lasting transformation. You can kind of think about it as training an internal microscope of attention that can then study the nature of self and consciousness. Um, however, I don't actually endorse this intensive concentration meditation for reasons I won't get into here in, in this lesson, but instead recommend the next type of flow state, which I'll talk about now. So the fourth type of flow is called natural flow. Take a moment to remember the last time that you were happy without any stimulating cause. You just felt very content. So you might have been just relaxing with your gaze wide open, gazing out in an expansive, beautiful view, or relaxing by the fire. Do you remember what that felt like? Maybe there was a sense of kind of timeless presence or a relaxed lucidity, like you're aware but not needing anything, completely content. This could have been the gateway into this kind of natural flow state, which is a state of continuous, joyful meta-awareness. And we can actually try this with the finger exercise now to experience, just to kind of glimpse it. Or if you put your finger back and focus on your fingertip as you did before and see what that feels like in your mind. And now relax your gaze and open it to include the whole room or your entire visual field. And you can go back and forth a couple of times between focusing on your fingertip and then relaxing your gaze and notice if your mind relaxes a bit and you feel this kind of subtle bliss an awareness that's very uh it's not fixating on anything in particular it's open and wide and spacious and even if you didn't glimpse it with this exercise this state of mind can be trained relatively quickly compared to meditative absorption flow 
and then it can be prolonged with practice. In fact, the, the altered states in meditation um, can become long-term trait changes in the brain, just like an athlete who's developing muscles at the gym. And one research study uh, found that experienced meditators show less mind-wandering activity in the brain. And this was research done at Yale and elsewhere. The other thing that's unique about natural flow is, is that it's the most dynamic type and it's capable of integration into everyday activities, even into a busy city life, let's say. The mind is happy and composed because it's neither resisting nor seeking life as it flows by. So the flow state's coming from a mind that's kind of like Teflon. It's not nothing sticking to it. Thoughts are flowing by, coming and going as they please. But the mind is very stable. And research seems to back this up. There was one study on advanced uh, meditators who got into natural flow, and they've showed this increased connection or increased con connectivity between the default mode network and the central executive network, which is kind of similar to the psychedelic state, um, but it's different from focused attention meditation. So these two networks that are normally anti-correlated and they're normally competing for resources, essentially, you can think about you're either kind of in your thoughts or you're externally focused in doing mode. And in this natural flow state, there's a balance between internal and external awareness. So the research seems to back that up a bit. And neuroscientists also found a decreased activity in what's called the posterior cingulate cortex, which is a key hub associated with getting caught up in an activity. Um, so unlike the first two types of flow state, natural flow also maintains the witnessing observer online, this meta-awareness. Yeah, it's less amped up neurochemicals. It's this more parasympathetic, very serene, calm state of mind, uh, which can be also quite durable, quite enduring and stable. And I hypothesize it hasn't been proven yet, but I think natural flow can also potentially alter maladaptive thought patterns uh, similar to psychedelics in that they can help create fresh tracks in the snow. If you imagine someone who's stuck in a rut, they're going down the same, skiing the same path over and over again, thinking the same negative thoughts over and over again. Uh, it's kind of like the mind is fixated on these thoughts or this story in the head. And then natural flow is more, uh, is kind of letting things go, letting things go and having a, a happy mind. So I think it, if people who are stuck in these negative mental states learn natural flow, it can really help. And it, just like the last type meditative absorption, it's not really about the bliss so much. It's about the deep insights, the inner clarity and self-transcendence or lasting well-being that can result from natural flow. So relatively few people know about this fourth type of, of flow state and yet it can be enjoyed with relatively little effort. So natural flow is the result of mental training, of meditation. And I like what the Stoic Seneca said. He said, how many train their bodies and how few train their minds. So I hope you'll join me. I'm starting a 30 day course on the YouTube channel. It's also going to be free on the app. So this is part of the FitMind nonprofit, and I'll teach a four-step method for mastering the FitMind lifestyle. So this, this 30 days is all about meditation, science, and bliss. And you can, it's, it's all free. If you've thought about starting a meditation practice or taking your current practice to the next level, this will be just a few minutes a day where you can commit to training your mind. And then also there'll be like a mini lesson on kind of the neuroscience and how to bring it into your daily life because it's really a lifestyle. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I hope you'll join me. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel where you'll get the each day's new training. And you can also check out the free FitMind app 
on the App Store. And I hope you'll join us. Thank you so much. And also, I would love to hear from you if you care to comment about what is your favorite type of flow state and how your experience went with the little finger exercise. I think it'd be cool to hear uh, whether that was helpful for people. And yeah, lots more to come on natural flow. Thanks so much for taking the time to hear me out and to train your mind. Have a great day.